everyone, I'm Richard. This is Grey Wizard Gaming. And today I am talking about what does Dire Azathoth mean for your gaming table? So we had a uh, person in the comments request this be the next video. And so here you go. There were, in such voyages, incalculable local dangers, as well as that shocking final peril, which gibbers unmentionably outside the ordered universe. Where no dreams reach, that last amorphous blight of nethermost confusion which blasphemes and bubbles at the center of all infinity, the boundless demon sultan Azathoth whose name no lips dare speak aloud, and who gnaws hungrily in inconceivable, unlighted chambers, beyond time, amidst the muffled, maddening beating of vile drums in the thin, monotonous whine of accursed flutes, to which detestable pounding and piping dance slowly, awkwardly, and absurdly the gigantic ultimate gods, the blind, voiceless, tenebrous, mindless other gods whose soul and messenger is the crawling chaos, Nyarlathotep. So, Dire Azathoth. First of all, he is not a extension of the Azathoth expansion. So if you don't have the Azathoth expansion, which you should, but if you don't have it, it's fine. This is an independent great old one. He is just a normal Igu that you can recruit into your faction. Norm, I mean, he's amazing. He's awesome. But normal is Igu's git, I guess. So how does he work? He is very different. First of all, in a game with Dire Azathoth, the factions who have multiple starting locations they must place their glyph tokens in their start areas. So what does that mean? Windwalker, Opener of the Way, Cho Cho, and the Ancients, they have to place their glyph token on the board so that everybody can see where you started. And it says do not use Dire Azathoth on the Primeval, Primeval Earth or Shagai maps. So um, that's because it can be problematic, right? Okay. So how to awaken Dire Azathoth? He costs 10. That's one of the most expensive Igus that I can think of. You have to control a gate on an enemy faction's start area. So that is difficult. I don't know. It's not difficult, but I mean, it's interesting. People are very protective of their starting locations for no real reason, except maybe Cthulhu, who, you know, needs it. But with he, when he's in play, people are going to be uh, more protective, I think. Pay 10 power and place Dire Azathoth in the area. What's his combat dice? You roll a die and Dire Azathoth's combat rating is equal to the result of the roll. So, you know, a, when it says die, a d6. Mindless destruction. So this is his innate ability. It's a post-battle ability. Any faction battling in Dire Azathoth's area gains his choice of either one doom or one power for every unit that faction kills or eliminates in that battle. Dire Azathoth need not be involved in the battle. So... If Dire Azathoth is in play, people, if they can choose, will choose to have battles in that space, even if they don't attack Azathoth, Dire Azathoth. So that's interesting. All right. So to unlock his spell book, it says, as an action, pay 20 power. That's pretty difficult. Pretty crazy, right? Why? Well, let's see.
All right. So the blind idiot God. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen this game over. It's not a post battle. It's not a doom phase. It's game over. Immediately win the game. Even if you do not have all six faction spellbooks or the most doom. That's it, guys. This is how you win. That's why you watch the videos. You get him, you win the game. Well, you get him after you defeated somebody else's starter area, and then after you saved up 20 power to buy the spellbook, but then you win. That's it. Ever have a bad idea? Yeah. All right. So not paying 20 power if you can and winning the game, that's a bad idea. Drinking a shot of crack on an empty stomach? I don't know. I guess we'll see. So that's who Dar Dar that's, that is. that's who Dara Azathoth is. So let's bring it all home. Who can, who can, who can get there as a thought and get his spell book and win? That is pretty difficult. It's, it's not impossible. There should be times in the game. I, in my opinion, there should be at least once or twice every game where you res ended up having five gates. And having a high priest in addition is not crazy. If you have five gates, people are coming for you normally. So you won't have five gates very long normally, which is why I say only once or twice in the game will you have five gates as a general rule. But who else can do it? Uh, or who has an advantage to do it? Let's say who has an advantage. First of all, if you're playing with the Ancients faction, the ancients can get four additional power by strategically placing their cathedrals in other people's faction spaces. So that, that relieves some pressure on how many gates you need to have, right? However, if you own Dire Azathoth, people are definitely going to be less likely to want the free power because that's what, how it works. You give them free power, they give you free power. If you have Dire Azathoth, they don't want you to have free power. It's too expensive. They don't want to get the free power by giving you free power. So that becomes hard and becomes more of a choice. You can't force it. The Cho Cho. Now, the Cho Cho have three high priests. Three. They can possibly have a lot of power. It's difficult. I very rarely see them get beyond three gates. So that's still, that's still enough. I mean, six from gates, six from cultists, that puts you at nine. Three more from three high priests, that puts you at 12. Sacrifice three of them for two power each, that puts you at 18. So you really only need either a couple captured cultists or one more gate. And boom, you've won. So four gates, Cho Cho, full bore, you can do it. You can actually win the game with Dire Cthulhu or Dire Azathoth. All right. Um, Windwalker. If your enemies are foolish, you can try to spin your wheels a little bit so they don't know what you exactly you're going to do. Well, they kind of know what you're going to do, but they can't stop it. If you have some ways to avoid spending power or breaking even, perhaps capturing cultists, things like that, where you spend a power, you get a power. Then hibernate and still hold on to enough power. They are dramatically easier at, at pulling this off because if you can somehow end the round with 10 power, I don't see how it's possible for you to 
not be able to hibernate, put, push that 10 power over to the next turn and win the game. Because, I mean, that's just a given. All right. Um, who else? Black Goat. Obviously, the Dark Young. That's three more power, plus a High Priest. Plus, Shep Negroth has a, has a, you know, using Avatar has a pretty easy way to capture a Cultist or two. That's easy. Sleeper. Sleeper doesn't look like it, but Sleeper can capture monsters using their Great Old One the same way that other people can capture cultists. So you capture, and now it costs you one power still. All you're doing is you're moving power from one turn to the next. Now, who I would like to see be able to do it is Narlatotep using Crawling Chaos, but he can't. Nobody's going to let you. That's the thing. And that's the number one problem, not problem, but the number one complaint from Crawling Chaos players is nobody lets them have the free power from, you know, um, um, Thousand Forms. So you want to roll the die, get a six, and get six more power. And if, I mean, hey, if somehow you can pull it off, that'd be amazing because you could have like 14 power, roll a six, everybody else that you have it, and then boom, you're at 20 power and you win. But who's going to do that? You're going to have to like pay people, bribe people real money. I mean, because they're just not going to. So um, otherwise, I don't see a lot of opportunities without extra units. If you add Dire Azathoth and some of the different neutral units that manipulate power in some way, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for a wild ride. And who better to uh, commandeer this ride than Azathoth? Because he's supposed to be chaotic and insane. If you let somebody get extra power from a neutral unit and have Dire Azathoth in that game, people are going to be fighting over him. People are going to be fighting over this unit. And if you get it, I mean, because non-independent Great Old Ones you don't lock down. I mean, you do lock down. So Azathoth will exchange hands a couple times in the game. Maybe. He's expensive. But other neutral units, they don't. So if you get a neutral unit that can give you a little bit extra power, everyone's going to be watching you. They're going to be afraid. And that can be bad. Usually you don't want them afraid. You usually want to shock them with, here's my Elder Signs, I win. But I don't know. if. Man, if you win with Dire Azathoth using the blind idiot god, I want to see, like, just take a photo of your game table. I want to know what happened. Kraken is amazing, but don't do it on empty stomach. Second thought, Dire Azathoth. He is super cool. I he, just mindless destruction, right? Just the ability to have people have battles where everybody either gets one doom or one power for every unit that that faction kills or eliminates in that battle. Be Cthulhu, right? Cthulhu loves Igus. So you're you're doing your thing and you're like, "Come at me, bros." I mean, it's he is a great combat, but combat factions often struggle to get massive amounts of powers uh, of power. But combine it, and just mindless destruction can be amazing. It can be really good. So he himself is not that great of a combatant, in my opinion. I mean, one d six. I'm always going to roll a one or a two, so it's not that great. But Mindless destruction is super cool, and you can win just by that. So, uh, plus the sculpt. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I always keep him like out. Like most of my other figures, I put away in their boxes. Well, one, he doesn't come with a box. He comes with a brown box, and man, I, I would pay extra, Sandy, if I could get 
a cool Cthulhu Wars box for all these different extra units. However, let's step away from that. I would leave this guy out anyways, because he is just a great figure. Like, you don't need to play with him. And I know a lot of people bought figures from me, like my extra figures. They would just buy them because they wanted to use them in D&D campaigns and stuff. So this is such a cool figure. I love this figure. And I don't care that most, um, most low, like newer tier players do not want to play with a character that's going to um, this dramatically affect the tide of the game. They don't want to worry about it. They really want the more chess-like aspect of my figures do this and I can do this. So they don't, in the beginning, you know, after they get comfortable, then they're like, yeah, let's change things up. But in the beginning, this can really, I think, um, mess with things. Anyway, I love this character. I really do. And I, uh, yeah, I want to know. Comment down below if you've played with Dire Azathoth, if you like his powers, and um, you like Kraken because it's my drink of choice. I, uh, I do love it, not just because of the name, though the name doesn't hurt. Um, though there, in New Orleans, there's a, uh, there's a voodoo, black voodoo rum. It's really good. And you can't get it outside of the state of Louisiana, I think. Um, and Bermuda has a black rum that is, it's like drinking caramel. I don't know. It's, it's amazing. This is good, though. This is really good. This is my go-to drink, if possible. When I don't have, well, I don't know when I'm not traveling around the world and stuff. So with that, I'd love it if you click like, click subscribe. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to be traveling next weekend. So I don't know if I'm going to get a video out next Tuesday, but I'm going to try. I do get back that Monday and I'll have like a few hours. So it may not be a, may not be a big video, but with that, um, bye. Can't see your face. Tell me where did you go? Was it something I did, something I said that made it all fall down? Maybe I need to know. Cause I'm losing my faith. And the more that I give, the less I get.